hey, if you're starting out, I think OnlyFans is really a very fast way to make money. Hey guys, Alex Fedotov here, and today I have a special guest, Marek Badner from Czech Republic, currently doing $6 million per month with his e-commerce business. So thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Tell me, tell us more about your journey, right? So for people that don't know you, like what your journey has been, how long you've been in e-commerce, how long you've been in the business? I mean, in business in general, I think that I started back when I was studying university economics, because uh, I saw one of the questions was, uh, you know, when I realized that normal life, like nine to five was not for me. Honestly, I was, terri <clears throat> I was terrified since the very, I don't even, as far as I can remember, I was terrified of having nine to five. Uh, I think that it has uh, something to do with uh, the traumas that you have as a kid, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I had a very bad experience with authority figures f since very early. When I was like five years old, you know, I was playing football and the, the kind of the football coaches, you know, the, in general, they're, they're usually dicks. And uh, this one was, uh, he was alcoholic. He was drinking booze and uh, just didn't treat us well. And I think that since I was a kid, I had this sort of like almost like a sixth sense or intuition, you know, and I, and then I kind of didn't really felt uh, like, haven't felt like I belonged there. Uh, to that football club as a, as a result because he somehow, you know, he was, he was, he was always bitching and, and I think that this uh, issue with uh, this authority um, led to me being kind of traumatized because also when you're a kid, uh, you tend to magnify everything, right? Mm. You, you, you tend to, and also the, the way I remember this event might be much more dramatic than it actually was. But when you're a kid, you know, even in this room, if you, if, if you would be here when you're five years old, you would look at this room and it's like so huge, you know, you, you would consider it like an, as an entire city. And, and, and 20 years later, you would be like, oh, this is a cool room, but you wouldn't see it. So point being, when you're a kid, you see things much bigger than they, than they really are, you know, it's just perception. Uh, and so this led me ultimately to uh, realizing very early uh, that nine to five is not for me because I will not let any dickhead tell me what I want to, what am I going to do? And, uh, yeah. So, uh, as a part of it, I started experimenting. I had a good friend that was this, you know, uh, ballsy sales guy who, uh, always, uh, was trying something and, uh, was always talking about money. And I think that I kind of, uh, took it as a fever from him. And we started to be interested both. Uh, we kind of complemented each other. It's funny because the very first business venture, I don't think that I ever uh, said it anywhere, was we just <coughs> ordered a bunch of iPhone uh, cases from AliExpress with uh -huh. like Homer Sim Simpson theme, you know, and stuff like that. Um, like trademark stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, trademark stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and we ordered those. We uh, bought it to our, check, uh, to, our, to our check address. So we had stock and we would just create check e-commerce website from some, with, uh, on some dark CRM. And we would literally just make the e-shop, uh, the e-commerce e the, the e website. And uh, I think that we would list the products on Facebook, not even at run as an, as an ad, but just oh, wow. listed there the products and we would start it to have sales. Bro, it was- Which year was that? <laughs> that was 2000, maybe 16, 17, oh, wow. not, something not, like not that. Not that long ago. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was uh, yeah, I think around 2016, something like that. And so that's how, that's how the whole thing started. I mean, obviously we had no idea what the I barely remember when I was using YouTube that much at that point. You know, YouTube was not really big in Czech. I, imagine just, we were very isolated. You, I'm sure mm -hmm. that you yeah. would relate, you know, when you were in Ukraine. Yeah. You kind of, you're, you're completely cut off from the rest of the world. Yeah. It's not like you, you know where to look for information, you know. And I think that e-commerce started to be big at that time. So we just tried to learn and put our hands on any piece of information that we could. And uh, yeah, that's how we started. We sold the... We sold the we, we, we sold this, we built it for like one year, we sold it for like 4K to some guy, you know, and so... Kind of the you, business yeah, that yeah, you yeah, built. Yeah, yeah. So we made 2K each and... Uh, how did you spend it? I don't even know how I <laughs> spent it. I think on family, I think that I bought something uh, for my brother and for my mom. That's how I started. But then I tried to do fashion brand, I tried to make fashion brand. And uh, that was actually, that's also a very good lesson that I learned because I became extremely product oriented. I had no idea 
about marketing, how to sell, but I just wanted to make a great product. I love aesthetics. Yeah, I, I got really into fashion. I enjoy, I was following a lot of brands, looking at their, at, at every single post of theirs, uh, on their Instagram, on their, you know, back then it was not really TikTok, so mainly Instagram website. I would scan everything. I would have five brands and I would have a document for each and I would download the images and I would look at it and I would try to, you know, stop and like see how would how, how it makes me feel, the, mm. the images and the vibe. And then I would see that they... Th like subconsciously, right? Because I mean, you didn't have like <coughs> marketing education or anything like that. That just like naturally happened to you. Yeah, yeah. That was just curiosity. Huh. That was just, I, I just like things that would stimulate me visually. I just really enjoyed things that stimulate me visually, you know? And then you would be looking at like, okay, they, now there is a uh, spring, summer uh, collection, mm -hmm. 2008, let's 18, you know, SS18. Uh, then uh, winter uh, on, um, uh, or uh, autumn, winter to, uh, 19. And you would see how the, how the color scheme and how the color, pa color patterns would change. Mm -hmm. And then you would notice that the same colors that one brand uses, as long as it's the same, let's say it's street where you would see that they use the same colors and so you start to see patterns right anyways it's it's totally uh, off topic it's just that 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 it really uh made me i think that that's where i learned how to kind of be product obsessed which this skill then i forgot for a while when when i was doing drop shipping mm -hmm. because that's the, the total polar opposite and now i I, th I feel like i'm starting to uh you know lean back towards being more product focused but yeah the, the, the second venture was this fashion brand failed miserably i had a great product phenomenal material i, I made jeans i uh, you're making them like custom yeah yeah custom oh, wow. uh, Where? i mean i was in retired. czech republic no no in china i took a loan uh I, I i don't even know how they gave me the loan i took a loan i got like 15k or something it was a lot of money in china uh -huh. right so it was a big bet but i was like hey you know this shit worst case i would just find a job and just you know make you know paid off some uh somehow but you must you must remember that back then you know even rent in czech was is like what 200 dollars a month you know so it's like uh or maybe more a little bit more 300 400 mm -hmm. if you, you know but but point being the 15k was a lot of money especially in the eyes of student that has no income so yeah it was this econ failure uh i had a great product had no idea how to market it uh, no one cared and uh, I tried to come up with a story, but post hoc, like after I made the product, mm -hmm. that's when I you know, tried to come up with the story. And honestly, all I should have done was just took some images, run some Facebook ads, because the impressions in Czech are so cheap, that that's all I had to do, all I had to do. Problem was, because the product was so good, the costs were quite high, so mm. I had to price it relatively high in order to be, even just to be break even. It, taught me extremely powerful lesson that I learned to this day, and that is just ship fast. Just build MVP and ship fast. Even, mm. if, even if you're product oriented, come up with an MVP. Don't think about it too much. Put it to the market. See what's the reaction. If it's good, bad, iterate fast. Take the feedback to your heart. Yep. Improve based on the feedback and ship again and again and again. And just, mm -hmm. you know, just fast iteration, same way SaaS companies, tech companies are right now building. So, yeah. Like, so you started with dropshipping. How, how much time it took you to, to have some meaningful success? So at first, like $100,000 a month. Five months. And before that, you were like breaking even, losing money. So breaking and losing money, yeah. What was the thought process in your head, right? Like, let's say you, you know, you're losing money or you're breaking even, doesn't look that promising. What kept you moving those, through those initial five months until you had the initial success? I think success uh, happens inside out. You first need to become successful yourself and it will then manifest and translate into reality through your actions. Because every th the, the business is extension of you, mm -hmm. right? Your yeah. personality. And business results are a lacked reflection of your actions right mm -hmm. so if you do something right now if you work hard right now on something obviously it depends on 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 on, uh, on size of the business because now that you're a ceo your your the action that you take today will probably take 6 12 18 24 months to 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 realize mm -hmm. but you will know that in those 24 months what you're doing now uh, well, it, you know, it will, it will hopefully manif uh, kind of translate into good results. And that's what CEO and that's, what, that's the definition of a visionaire. You kind of 
you, vi you you envision something within the next uh, in in which uh, direction society you know uh, um, goes, and you just kind of make decisions that are in the light of that direction. You You're know? kind of like making bats, right? In a yes, way. Yes. Yes. Pretty much. Uh, but why I say that is uh, to circle back to um, what are the important things that uh, that uh, I was doing back then is I was really just obsessed by working on myself. I was really back then. Uh, so even back then, like it's not like you were making like millions of dollars, right? Even then, like you. Yeah, yeah. I I just I was just watching more general stuff generic stuff on how to become good leader i was listening to simon sinek i was mm -hmm. listening to uh tom Bilyeu, uh i was listening to uh yeah just a bunch of smart people uh thinking grow rich you know among the first books that i that i read and it's just i really became obsessed about being be, uh, getting better and i also remember um, just a lot of self-identity adjustment uh was happening back uh, at that time, meaning I would go on a run. Right now, I'm listening to audiobook, you know. Uh, but back then, I would literally just listen to a guy to some motivational speech, mm -hmm. and I would just. And I don't know. I I I didn't know it back then, but now looking at it in retrospect, I was brainwashing myself into believing that I can make it and mm -hmm. that you know I can I will be successful. And then what you will be successful in. What will what business you will select and all that that, that the whole thing you know it it will it will happen but I think seriously uh, you first need to have this sort of innate fire and build this inner build this innate belief this inner belief that you can make it and then you know because for example with econ why it took five months I think that it's relatively fast considering the amount of information that I had access to back then. Uh, I just positioned myself smart. I knew that I already had experience with e-com. Uh, obviously, it was dark, shit, but had no budget to test. So what I was doing, I was active in all kinds of Facebook communities, mm -hmm. and uh, I would just interact with people and pitch them and to buy one hour call with me, two hour call with me, where mm -hmm. I would consult them and give them legit advice. Obviously, I uppriced it as fuck, but you know, hey, capitalism, right? <laughs> so I was charging 500 bucks per hour to people, sometimes 300 bucks. I always pitched, I was just a sales guy selling my own info. So that's how I was making already like two, three K a month, mm -hmm. uh, which was solid, but I never took it. I never saw it as a business. I saw it as a means to an end to build an e-com. I always wanted to build e-com. I just need the cash, mm -hmm. cash flow. So I would be building the website, the, the, the e-com site, and uh, I would just have clients and uh, whatever I would make from these clients, I would, I would fuel into that business. Mm -hmm. I was failing at first, but then, you know, uh, would hit some, some uh, with Philip, actually already my uh -huh. current business partner, we would, we would hit a home run and uh, we would just, you know, from then on, kept on improving, yeah. What were the main limiting beliefs that kind of like stopped, kind of like prevented you from making that money, you know, faster. I think you first really just need to want it in the first place. You just need to know why you want it, you know? Because if you don't, you will you will just give up. If you don't have no if you have no sense of direction, you're just kind of floating mm -hmm. in a vacuum, you know? And uh, so I think having a very clear sense of direction doesn't have to be anything glorifying, you know, or or anything spectacular. You just wanna, let's say that you just want 10K a month to be able to, uh, you know, live well and pay your, uh, let's say, retire your mom, right? You just wanna make enough to live good life yourself and provide for your family. Let's say that's the start, starting point. And let's say that you did the math, you want 10K net profit post tax a month. That alone is a solid direction. A, re the, a reason that must be ba uh, you know greater than yourself uh, in my opinion so let's say if the moment you involve uh, family it's it's it becomes uh, huge especially if you value family right uh, which you should mm -hmm. so yeah I think just having a sense of direction which is not I don't know whether that's a that's not even a so, uh, limiting belief but it's just I think that people very often just see someone else doing something and automatically wanting to do it as well but they never ask themselves why do i want it so and so lack of self-awareness in a way 
right? Lack yeah, of, actually could be, yeah. 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 Lack of self-awareness, kind of like <clears throat> what moves you, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the humans, uh, you know, they have psychological, uh, you know, the um, physiological, right? Like, let's say you want to eat, you want to drink water, there's like basic needs, right? Mm. And you'll do those whatever it takes, right? I mean, if you're hungry, I mean, you'll find a way to find food and eat, right? Because otherwise you die, mm. right? In that same way, I think what you just mentioned is that people should reflect on kind of like, maybe there's some kind of like, something that just like emotionally gets you or something, as you said, could be family, right? Could be some other reasons, other people that you want to take care of, provide for. It's kind of the tools in your arsenal, right? Like on, based on what you've said that you can use to your advantage to like motivate yourself. I mean, at the beginning, like you will have to find those leverage points. Yeah, I think that in the beginning is very simple. Get a sense of direction and identify opportunities. Mm. which changed by the way when i was starting facebook ecom dropshipping was you know uh very very uh just popping up i think what right now is very hard look if i was a brokey uh i think only fans agency right now is a phenomenal way to start to make quick cash yeah i mean i know it's haram you know uh but at the same time bro there is so much money i know a guy who uh, ran out of ca very good friend of mine like a brother to me and he had some issues with uh, his partner so they stopped he ran out of cash he started OnlyFans agency and immediately they were profitable month one with no cash flow nothing they're right now netting I don't know I, I will just throw a number let's say 20k a month mm -hmm. within a half a year which is fucking cr you know that's that's good money uh, within six months and he didn't have to invest anything and I think that literally on month three they did like 10k it's just that they there were some ups and downs because uh -huh. he's learning yeah. the business model so point being uh, I'm not saying go and start OnlyFans but you know if I would see OnlyFans agency as a temporary stepping stone in my in my uh, in my journey, hey, I wouldn't mind doing shit like that. Hmm. You know, if I, it's just about it's again. You need to know what you want. If you want to have 10k a month, don't try to revolution change the world. Yeah. Just just get that back first. If now 2023 for OnlyFans agency is the fastest way to make money, and as let's say that you know you're not religious, because obviously if you're if you're religious, there would be some you know conflicting. It will be conflicting, right? Mm -hmm. So that, uh, um, it's it's a, OnlyFans is inherently a bad example, but it's just that's what right now you know is, is I, happening. I think, so I think I mean it's it, maybe it's bad example, but it's also a good example because if you want to if you want to get yourself and your family out of that. Um, you know, I think that's what also a lot of people have. They're like, oh, I don't want to do this. This is like below my level, right? Yeah. Or I don't want to do this because like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm bigger than this, right? Mm. F I mean, you haven't done shit. Mm. Maybe you fucking should, mm. right? For me, you know, I was a VA for $8 per hour. Mm. Like, you know, I, I could have, and because, of, because I was a VA for $8 per hour, that opened me, opened me the opportunities. I met some people that I still know until this day in the software, in the software space, right? That, that helped me to make money at that point of time. That helped, and but I could have said like, oh no, it's like being like a VA for eight dollars per hour. It's like, no, 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 you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm a big boss, right? And I think that's also like a big, um, you know, some people like starting, let's say e-commerce businesses that I'm seeing, I'm like, oh, I wanna like, I wanna hire someone to build me a website. Oh, I wanna hire someone to add, edit me like videos. I wanna hire, uh, maybe you should like just move those buttons a little bit, right? Like learn how to do it. That will give you the skill sets, right? Especially if you don't have money and like learn the skill set, learn how it works. So at least when you outsource it, when you give it to someone, you know if they're doing a good job or not. And so I think that's also, um, especially when you're starting, right? Like you probably have to lower your standards in a way, right? In terms of like what you will and will not accept, right? If you want to make money, drive Uber, Drive, you know, Uber, accumulate the capital, get out of that cycle, get out of that circle, right? So then over time, you, you can quit that. But, you know, I think that's, that's the difference between people who succeed and people who not, because people who succeed, they, they succeed at all costs. You need to really want it. Like, if you want it, yes. you just need to, you, you, 
accept the fact that you will need to ma- get your hands dirty. Yes, right? exactly. Sometimes doing things that you don't like. Again, I'm not saying start OnlyFans agency, but even just being a VA for eight hours, uh, eight hour, uh, eight dollars per hour. You know. Yeah, the general idea stands. I think OnlyFans is a good business model, and uh, obviously e-commerce. It's still hey, it's yeah. good. You just need to be a little bit better. You yeah. need cash. You need more. Uh, you need more. I would recommend to start e-com if you have a job and stable income mm-hmm. and you you have 1k 2k a month that you can invest into that uh into um that business uh, into back into business aside from that you just need to be willing to commit hours to learn yeah market research I would say mm-hmm. because there are f- three core skills I would say that are imp- crucial if you want to make it in e-com market research which teaches you learning your audience, uh, learning your, your, you know. I think that that's by far the most important. Copy and media buying. I think if you know these three, you can start. How about creative? Creative, I would consider the part of copy because, uh, mm-hmm. but maybe, yeah. So let's, let's call this not just copy, but let's call it, yeah, creative plus copy because obviously that's yeah. it. And maybe, actually, you know what? Let's keep them separate. Market research, actually market research and copy go together. And then CRO, CRO in terms of both, create, mm. both creatives and landing page. So yeah, let's do it that, that way. Uh, copy plus market research because copy goes hand in hand with market research. And CRO, both creative and landers. Uh, and um, uh, media buying. If you master, uh, uh, if you improve on these three skills, you'll be you you. There is no way you will fail as long as you keep on, as long as you design to for yourself this sort of uh, feedback loop. Let's say weekly sprints where you will just learn every week and by the end of every week reflect and then iterate. If you do that for for a couple of months, you know you will be a phenomenal marketer that stands. Uh, that uh, that stands uh, from the crowd, and uh, you will be able to make money with ecom easy. That's mm. it. Do you read books a lot? Yeah, I mean now, let's say the last month because I was in China, I, I read less, but I still read, I don't know, two or three books. But I read a lot and I listen a lot. So uh, I think that we had discussion. We had this discussion. This discussion together. Um, I listen roughly. It's like the, the math is simple. If you read 20 pages a day. Just 20 pages a day will take you maybe one hour if you really want to retain the mm-hmm. information. I'm a slow re- reader too. But 20 pages a day is 140 a week. Mm. That's like half a book. So you have two books a month just by reading. And obviously on weekends I read, uh, I read more. So three, four books a month if you just read 20 pages a day. And if you listen to audiobook one hour a day, that's roughly almost one book a week. So if you combine that, you, you easily you get to four to six books uh, a month and uh, yeah I think that it's also a great way how to kind of brainwash yourself into believing in success so mm. if you're starting out I think psycho kibernetics is a good one I think principles by Ray Dalio because all th- these teaches you uh, about self-image which mm-hmm. is important yeah and uh principles teaches you about like the general fundamentals of how to conduct yourself in life and how to build business because principles is broke divided into two sections one is this, one is ray dalio's prison life and the other one is business and the principles are yeah it, it's it's powerful because you you kind of learn how to live how to conduct yourself in 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 your life or not just how you conduct yourself, but you kind of can extrapolate some 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 um, new ways of uh, doing things. Uh, and the same goes for business. You just see how a billion dollar um, uh, business owner uh, runs and conduct conducts his business. And yeah, f- because for me, those these were among the not among the first principles was actually among the first books I've ever read. And like one of the biggest print one of the it was one of the biggest pivots in my life and i live by it till this day mm-hmm. it's brutal transparency and radical open mindedness like you just need to admit you, you push for your ideas strong but uh-huh. be willing to be willing to listen because some you you might not be you, uh, you're less right than you think you are and just be yeah, being transparent you know if there is some issue don't uh, keep the elephant in the room just um get the, yeah just you know uh, reveal the elephant uh, reveal the elephant. Be the, be the guy that will not be afraid to 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 call out the elephant uh, in the room. So I think, and you see that I I read this book three times. Last time probably one year ago, 
And uh, these two principles are yeah, among the most profound mm -hmm. in my life that I live by till this day. In your life and in your business? Both, yeah. Huh. What about you? What, uh, what books would you recommend? Um, I like How to Get Rich by Felix Dennis. Mm -hmm. Also has a lot of um, kind of like overlap between his uh, founder of Maxim magazine, if you know. Uh -huh. Maxim magazine yeah, and all yeah. the, the uh -huh. and many other magazines he built like a, had like a net worth of 500 or 600 million when he died. And um, yeah, it's also a lot of a lot of personal stuff in that book too because mm. it's like fear of failure is like the first chapter in the book that where he actually gets into the content of the book is like how to conquer the fear of failure. So, so he calls it like elephant in the room, right? It's like, what will, your, what will your neighbor say if you fail? What do your friends say when you fail? Like you start a business, right? Obviously there's a lot of fears when you're starting the business and you obviously want to make it work, but there's so many factors that go into it. What if it doesn't work? Your wife, your husband, you know, like your family, your kids, like, oh, it's like, you know, and so all of those factors, um, he addresses this, addresses this right away. And one of the things, one of the most memorable things in that book, he says like, if you're not ready to like fail miserably, like on your face, in front of your neighbors, your family, your friends, you'll never be rich. Mm, I, I love that. I will write it down. That, that book is- that's, uh, that's very good. That's very good. 2021, we had a conversation Right now it's 2023. Mm. Back then, like you went from 100k a month to 1 million a month, right? And just like in a matter of few months, and now like you're doing 6 million a month, right? So what was pretty much the kind of like one thing, if you can condense it to one thing, that pretty much help you to 60x your business? Is the copy and market research both? It's like I said, like, you know, we were talking about the three things that mm -hmm. the three important th skills to master when you're in e -com or when you're getting into e -com, it was copy plus market research, create CRO on both creative side and landing page side and media buying. The first one is by far the most important copy and market research. I would even say market research more than copy, but it's really both. Uh, cause honestly, I mean. I write good ch I still write a good chunk of our copy, much less than I did uh, a few months ago. Uh, I already have a very good full-time writer that's absolute killer. But even even though I have these writers, they are kind of uh, I, I hammer them with the research that I've done for uh, um, you know the the pain points they were selling for uh, whatever knee pain, you know back pain, mm -hmm. uh, foot pain, all that because we were in a pain uh, pain relief uh, niche. Um, so yeah, it's copywriting and, and, uh, and research and the, the, the research is really so profound. I'm not good copywriter. I'm a below media, below mediocre copywriter. Uh, but I know my audience and I know what they want and I know their problems and I know what they're dreaming about. And I know that probably by around three thirty they wake up with pain in their feet and they will have to pop some Tylenol to to just you know fall asleep again I know that they're that they're ashamed to go out with their friends because they will probably be the one they will be last because they you know they can barely walk wow and uh, I know that uh, they like Taco Bell on Friday you know at 7 p.m. before their favorite show starts so it's like you you go to such an incremental detail market research never ends but it's just about knowing your your customer uh, to the point that you know you know uh, them better than they know themselves. You've started on this journey, like really mastering that direct response advertising. So direct response advertising is when you're using tools like VSLs, advertorials, you know, mm. long form sales pages. So when was that you kind of, about one year ago, you started like utilizing all of these tools to, to the fullest potential? I mean, yeah. It was November 2022, it was exactly one year ago, yeah. Wow, so in one year, so just to make sure, right? So in one year, you took that business from zero to $6 million a month? Mm, we started our brand, it was September, yeah. Mid-September, end, end of September, it was after Albania Capital Club. It was, so it was, let's call it beginning of uh, October. And back then, with that store, we were doing 200, we did 250K in September. 350k in October. No, even less in October because we got some ad account ban. And that's when that was the rock bottom, the October, because we 
we I I recall we were already shifting from from the old way of doing things to the new way but you know things always get worse before they get better mm -hmm. so we went from let's say 250 october 750 was november immediately so we tripled x wow we I'm, i'm a very fast action taker that's uh -huh. one of the advantages or not advantages that's one of the skills that i attained and that i um uh, one of the principles that i live by and that i uh, hammer on my team every day and that is you know just take action extremely fast so immediately when we when we kind of got clear andrew helped me a lot back then paul helped me mm -hmm. a lot back then i i will never forget that once i started to apply what they what they shared with me uh within two weeks we had some we had the first vs up up and running um and uh yeah so 750 november i don't know 1.5 uh december 1.8 january 2.5 February because obviously Q1 is very strong for uh, beauty and, and mm -hmm. health and uh, then it was around three and we kind of then we were stagnate stagnating and then it's all about figuring out what your biggest bottleneck is at that given moment and uh, we literally doubled our business from three to six uh, by switching from uh, Hong Kong payment processing to US payment processing. Oh, wow. Because the acceptance rate was so low for uh, Hong Kong, US in mm -hmm. its international transaction. So Wouter actually called that out uh, when I was calling, uh, when I was having a call with him back in March. And uh, that's, that's also another example of, th th there are certain initiatives that you will start, that you will plant a seed on and you will start that you will take mm -hmm. that will not have results so sooner than a few months uh. i started the process of creating c corp back in beginning of march it took us until mid until end of august till we transitioned completely to u.s payment processing but once that happened business doubled like this oh, we wow. went from 100k days to 250k days overnight stable wow. every day back to back i realized okay at this point for me copy is not a bottleneck is the payment processing because we we i can i can write i can probably get increment like much better with copy but at that point it was i was getting diminishing returns because my copy was relatively good and to get better where i would double my business mm -hmm. i would have to i don't know like it would probably take me like three years to, yeah. to or let's say yeah another year or two to uh to become so good that I would double my business through strict, uh, strictly through copy. Mm -hmm. And so then you ask yourself a question, well, is there another way how I can double my, my uh, as Peter Kell says, how I can double my high score, how I can double my you know, business. Then you just take a look at your business, you scan through each department, and I realize, hey, f uh, our acceptance rate was 60%, 65% on mm -hmm. credit cards. And I asked Andrew, I asked Joey, I asked, you know, Paul, a few other, a few other guys, it was 90%. Uh, and after, it was, again, after what P Water uh, pointed out. So, again, another lesson kind of is talk to the right people, have peers all along the way that will keep leveling up with you. And, yeah, so I realized, okay, acceptance rate is a bottleneck. We initiated the process of uh, creating the company. But it's not like you create US LLC and, and you know, within the next week, that's it. First, it was a C Corp for tax purposes and for, uh, yeah, just, we wanted to create legitimate structure. Mm -hmm. uh, the C Corp was owned by our Hong Kong, so there is a certain entire company structure that you need to create. Uh, so that takes time. Uh, a lot of meetings with lawyers and uh, you need to have a US citizenship or you need to, f you know, figure out, so you need to have someone who will sign, so, and I'm not a US citizen. So there yeah. was a lot of complications along the way, a lot of communication, but point being, it took five months five and a half for that initiative to flourish but when it did boom double the business so i know yeah. that i'm going going a little bit sideways but i think that these lessons uh yeah it's just i think it's i hope it i think it's you know it, yeah it's and it, every stage of the business right the challenges will be different right mm, mm. so what uh for example that the direct response right uh you know figuring out like vsls advertorials making that work making that making your business overall like more profitable and more scalable that might be the initial challenge and until you hit the next challenge and then you hit the next challenge and then it's like challenge after challenge after challenge and it never ends it's even like with billion dollar businesses they have their challenges they have lawsuits 
you know, Tesla's getting sued every like few months, you know, there's like, mm. it's a, it's never ending game. But I think it's also the expectation for people getting into the business. Like, do you really like, do you really like, just, just know what's waiting for you here? Like it's, it's not sweet, you if know? If it was easy, everybody would do it, right? Yeah. Things that you hate doing that you really don't want doing very often are the very things that you should be doing that. And those are very often the things that will lead you to the desired outcome. Very often is the case that it's, especially in the beginning, it's uncomfortable. What would you say to people that say e-commerce is saturated? Yeah, sure. E-commerce is definitely much more difficult than it was uh, three years ago. Sure, 100%. Uh, whether it's saturated, I don't think so. Whether it's the best business model to start to get into business, I don't know, I haven't been observing uh, like new business ideas, new business trends, but I can see, you know, uh, the, yeah, the only facts, I don't want to make it a thing of this, of this <laughs> podcast. It's, it's kind of weird. It's becoming weird at this point, you know, but, but Hey, that's, it's, it's just a thing. Uh, that's, that's a, it's a good way to start as well. Yeah. Just identify opportunities, snipe for opportunities, go on, like you're probably on TikTok a few hours a day anyway. Just look at TikTok, how to make money. Look at, look on YouTube, how to make money. And whatever is the most trend thing, you will start to see it over and over and over. That's what I would do if I would, you know, want to make money and I wouldn't know where to start. I would just check up, just look at what people have to say and look for patterns. Obviously then looking at the person and whether that person is credible because you don't want to listen to person that's just some random dude. You want to listen to someone that's kind of credible. So I would look at the commonalities among what people have to say and then what are those resources, how legitimate they are. Kind of try to create your own picture and that's, that's how it started. And maybe, yeah, maybe I would arrive at the conclusion that e-commerce might not be the best uh, business model to start because, hey, it's, it's tough. You need to have consistent income. It will probably take you th six to nine months. But it all starts with, the, with knowing your direction, knowing what you want, knowing knowing that and just you know yeah knowing having a very clear direction and commit to it mm. if you kind of half ass that shit, it will reflect it will project into those results as well right and yeah. uh, the moment you the moment you don't take it seriously and the moment you you don't commit yourself fully it will always translate into those results so you need to you need com you need to commit for sure every every business is competitive no matter like how you look at it right unless you i don't know pioneering something like super new but um at the end of the day you have to look where demand where the demand is right so if there is a demand right and and you you know obviously e-commerce is a humongous industry i like to kind of like close some of the variables right let's say taking your business right so you're in the pain pain relief niche mm. right now there's two things that are obvious about pain relief niche, right? Number one, people have pain and will probably have pain until the end of time. The pain will not go away. Yeah, it will be always there. Plus, the market recycles. Yeah. New people are starting to yeah. be in have pain, pain every year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? So now the market is growing, market is evergreen. So all you have to figure out in that equation then is like pretty much how to differentiate from other people already selling in that bigger picture because you already covered the demand you already know the demand is there right you know that people are using it right you know like that you can find those people on facebook or tiktok all of these platforms you can target them right now you, now you just have to figure out what to show to them and how to differentiate from other people that show to them there is another thing once you identify the industry you can just look at the best players what they're doing and you know just kind of replicate it in your own way I know, but I you know. don't even need to invent reinvent yeah. the wheel like bro i know i know so many people that copied your mm. and making hundreds of thousands of dollars per month mm. whether someone rips my product you know it's ultimately what it tells me what's the, the the feedback to for me in this specific case is i failed the product differentiation and that's mm. why we're right now doing our best to bring to the market product that's custom with, you know, intellectual property. It's not like you kind of, you know, playing around, right? You're doing six million, since six million months, right? Mm. 
So in a way, you figure out differentiation. You figure out the differentiation on the marketing side. You figure out how to take the product that everyone has access to and sell it differently. Now, like giving you the, the product that actually differentiated from everyone else and now amplifying it with your marketing skills that mm. you know how to differentiate. Now that is a hundred million dollars a year, my friend. Next, I year. would say, I would say, even if we wouldn't change the product, we will bring, we will get two hundred million for sure. It's probably just optimizing our back end. Uh, that alone will bring us to you know outbound sales, improving yeah. outbound sales. That alone, uh, we're not on YouTube yet, so just mm -hmm. YouTube alone will double our entire business. So uh, the way I see it, even if we wouldn't change the product, we would like next year hundred million for sure, hundred maybe hundred twenty. 10 million a month, every, every month back to back, 120, 150. Uh, I would say that next year can be, we want to sell next year, but I think next year is, if we really stretch and push the team, 200 million is possible. But at the same time, hey, we will have a new product that's custom that was never sold on the internet yeah. before. It will be a little bit different than you know what, what, what we're selling right now. Uh, not super different, we're not trying to be Apple here yet. How situated is e-commerce, like if you can come in Within one year, create a business that does six million a year in a saturated niche. That's your answer. As long as you create something that market wants, what saturation in the first place? You know, as long as you, as long as you identify a problem in the market, and there is a lot of problems people have, and there is a lot of people on the planet, there's a lot of people in the U.S. Uh, as long as you identify a problem that people have, and you develop a solution and you help them solve the problem, they will be willing to pay you money. Yeah. Depending on how big the problem is, that will kind of directly translate mm. into how how big your business could be. It's simple as that. So I mean, I don't know this whole saturation thing. I mean, obviously you gotta go with the you gotta go. You kind of have to stay up to date. Like you know that now there is you know the, the AI is being big, so you mm -hmm. want to leverage that as much as possible in your business because that will be like an accelerator, like a catalyst in your business. But if you really, it all comes down always to the to the basics, problem, solution, you got business. You, 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 yeah, the solution is a product, you productize the solution, sell it to the market. How your <coughs> beliefs about money specifically have evolved over time, especially like until this point when you're making a lot of money? I mean, what is money, right? Flow of information, uh, it's just, something that allows you to transact. I live similar lifestyle that I lived two, three, four years ago. It's just that I travel a bit more and you know, maybe here and there I allow myself a bit more. Uh, I treat people around me well. I just look at it as a resource hmm. that creates opportunities. Even after we sell our brand, um, I will, all I will do is just take care of my family, so that they never have to work again in their lives and then just pump it into the next big thing that I will build. Mm -hmm. I'm a builder. I'm a builder by nature. And again, know thyself. If you enjoy whatever else, just invest the money in whatever else. But I'm a builder. I love building things. So to me, I use money as a, uh, to me, cap it's just capital that will unlock me opportunities, that will allow me to hire phenomenal people, mm -hmm. invest into things that will break, that, you know, that will break, whether it will be, I don't know, I'm, you know, Kind of, I want, I'm leaning towards AI, robotics, and 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 you know, uh, in that direction. So obviously, that will be heavily capital intensive. I think there's a lot more innovation in China than here. I mean, I don't know. You you'd be a better judge of that. What do you think? Like after visiting China, being here, where do you see like more innovations happening? And U.S. is the top dog. Mm. They have nothing to prove. A lot of it comes as a byproduct of U.S. being the world biggest power. People inevitably get complacent. They charge higher prices because they can, because you know your currency is world-used uh, currency that can be paid literally everywhere. So that that alone brings a lot of power. I mean, that's not to say that U.S. is still extremely creative. And you look at right now so many startups, uh, and uh, the best AI researchers are probably in the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. So I think U.S. is still uh, very creative in some aspects, but lack a lot in others. And China is the culture is so profoundly different. I think that they're phenomenal engineers, but they fail to innovate. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, like they, 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 
They copy. They copy. They copy. Every like Huawei and or any other phone uh, or any other you know hardware. I think that they're phenomenal at execution, much better than here. Hmm. Uh, they're much cheaper as well, much cheaper. You go to Shanghai, the prices are one fourth of what would you pay here for Man, like, anything. One fourth, maybe one fifth. I swear. Literally, we went to a very nice resto here. You pay for five people. We pay. 1500 1600 bucks like yeah. nice restaurant house nice dinner yeah. you know 1600 bucks that's like what 300 dollars per ha um, per head mm -hmm. in shanghai metropole bigger city than Flor uh, than miami uh huh 300 dollars for five people oh really yeah that's crazy yeah. like good restaurant not yeah good resto like very good, good resto yes wow very good resto wow 500 if you want to like some top dog wow so that's like third one third, one fifth of the price. And we talk about everything. We talk about coffee, food, prices of, of, of consumer goods. Wow, much, much cheaper. Plus, yeah, I mean the culture. You here, you know, Uber driver late by 15, 20 minutes, don't give a f you know, just hands you the food. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> thanks, thanks you, yeah, thanks you. You know, it's a good, good guy, nothing. But <laughs> you don't see the same drive from that guy that you see from guy in China. In China, if they tell you that your food will be delivered at 4.15, it will be delivered realistically at 4.05. Oh, so wow. they, they, they over deliver because they have more to prove. Because they're, you know, the, those people are more trapped. They, they're, they, it's almost like the society is maintained at a lower level, so that they want to create. The lower you are at that, you, you mentioned the Maslow's pyramid uh -huh, of hierarchy, yeah. right? Food, um, uh, shelter, sex. It almost feels like Ch China is trying to keep people as low as at, at that hierarchy as possible, just above having enough food, because that keeps you. That that's where you're the most motivated. I would bet money that you were the most hard hard worker when you before your success. And I was thinking about this the other day. I had to stim I have to stimulate hunger again because I, I tend to get complacent. Not like that I wouldn't work, but I would kind of get you know a bit comfortable and uh -huh. not grind as hard as I did back then. So stimulating this, which is that's a whole nother lesson, but again, it comes down to self awareness again. Wow. What do you you know what we Such put in the good beginning? Point. But stimulating environment where you have to in like uh, really push yourself i think it's so so important one of the ways to do that <clears throat> right stimulating yourself is surround yourself like with um mm. like masterminds and stuff like that where like you're the smallest fish and like then you're looking at the guys your age sometimes younger right doing bigger numbers than you right pissing you off right if you're competitive nature pissing mm. you off in a way right like how the f you know i can do better than that right like and so masterminds communities and stuff like that it's a great kind of like social like vehicle not just in terms of tactics and, and strategies that you can learn internally from like insiders but also from the perspective of like stimulating yourself as you said ess right e-commerce killing secrets it was Probably like one of the stepping stones, right? Like you have you have transcended like so many times more since then, right? And like into different levels of of performance, you evolved as a person a lot. But what was the um, kind of the biggest like the biggest things that um, ESS helped you with, like to go from you know six figures per month to like seven figures? I mean, you personally alone helped me with many things. I remember, you know. Even with some, we needed to do some transactions. I remember back in the day, you know, so you will, you will help me on the many levels, but even just, you know, yeah, which, which, which that alone is cool because if you have ESS and the, the owner is accessible, I think that it's great. You know, you were, you're always very open. I kind of, I remember before I saw ESS, uh, joined ESS, you would be this, uh, kind of, you know, figure that I would look up to, you know, and, <laughs> and it was one of the goals to kind of get closer to you. Right. Uh -huh. So seeing you being accessible that alone is very cool because you're you're a very well connected guy and that's like a, that's a skill set on its own like being good with people that that alone was very helpful and i would say ess alone i must confess i haven't watched a single video <laughs> <laughs> but i met wilder andrew joey paul john you know oh john you're you're yeah, you're, you're yeah. CEO. i met i'm i'm at faith 
Yeah, no, my girlfriend. Yeah. I met I met so many people that I surround my with by, by my. I met you. <laughs> <laughs> and we still like you know I I think it's a two years later, three years, whatever that 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 number is. We still in great relationship. We still talk. We still you know what I mean. For me, that's like it's rather getting better as the time goes by yeah. because it just so. I think it's extremely. Uh, it was definitely one of the best decisions that I've made. Simply. Yeah, just if you look at the ROI and the people that I talk to till the, right now, yeah, like they are pretty much all people I talk to. I don't talk to many people. I talk to you, Andrew, Paul, Joey, John. You know, obviously my girlfriend Faith. Uh, I mean, my business partner. I haven't met him through you, but even if I if I look at my 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 circle, and I look at the people that I talk to, most of them are from uh, ESS, and I think ESS is a phenomenal community for. Anyone who just really want to get better and really want to um, level up and yeah, I mean, make good cash, build build great things. I would say almost any business whatsoever, honestly, even if you have an agency or something, uh, I would join just because of the the people and the network that I will that I would surround myself with, and I wouldn't care about anything else. Just connecting with the right people, and I would look and I would you know search what I would listen to some to some past. Uh, uh, recordings of some calls, see and kind of gauge those people and I don't kind of identify people that I want to connect with. Question. Did mm. you see this happening? Did you see this like like did you did you manifest the shit that the life that you have, the business that you're yes. building? Yeah. Very intentional. Extremely intentional. Interesting. And so the vision that I created in June last year, 2022, which is roughly 16, 17 months from now, uh, uh, you know. Before uh, you had back, the, before you had this past, before yeah, you had before, success. Uh huh. I uh, I sat down and thought, okay, what do I want to do in the next two to three years? What's the two to three year plan? I want because I realized, you know, drop shipping up and down, million million dollar million dollars a month in revenue one month. Uh, 100k the, the next month but your overhead stays so it's kind of annoying so I thought hey something got to change something long let's do something long term you know you can do much more than that I sat down and thought okay I will sell and I think that back then it was because I was kind of so used to drop shipping I thought hey I will sell five brands each brand for at least uh, five million mm -hmm. I will sell or roughly in total it will make around 10, 30 million total exit right Obviously, I'm not building five brands now. I'm building one, but I will sell for much more than I even anticipated and than mm -hmm. I ever dreamt of. But that point is, I started with a vision. We will have X, Y, Z brands and we will start with one, build it to a certain point and then jump onto another. And that's how we started. We started one brand and we had, I literally have logos and, and domains for three other brands ready uh, because I thought that we will, you know, have four or five brands, three, three to five brands. But then as we started to scale this one brand, obviously we, the, the, the change plan, but uh, the, the plan changed. But I started with a vision that was extremely clear by this date, by, and I don't know now exactly the date, but it was very specific, like end of August, 2024, I will sell this brand, then I will sell this brand. I, I literally put in calendar where, uh, when I will, at which point I will sell each brand. I gave, I gave it some sort of wiggle room. I know I, I put there for how much and what would be the product. And uh, wow. so I was this specific, this, this extremely intentional. But again, you start with a vision and you're flexible enough to, to pivot. As, as you go along. You but, know? It, but at least you're giving your mind something to work on, right? And yes, at least like, correct. Because my mind is like a, it's like, it's like a rocket, like a rocket line, like, you know. When, Input, when, output, yeah, you yeah, feed so, it. And it's like, and it seeks, the, there is a target and it cracks along the way, right? It's like When you have a very clear goal and you're, you, you go for it, you kind of, you're like a magnetic pole you, and you start to attract the things that, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, you, you have here. It's, it's, 100% legit. How much energy do you allocate daily or did you previously allocate daily for this, like for like manifestation? I know you're like into like trans... Transcendental meditation, yeah. Yeah, so when did you start that? Like, was it like also coincidental or not, not necessarily? F no, Philip was into meditation for a long time and uh, he got me into TM. Uh -huh. And honestly, if it was not for him, I don't know whether I would actually meditate. He kind of almost forced me to it. He's like, bro, do it now. You will not regret. Every day that you were not doing it, by the time you do it, you will regret that you haven't done it, 
earlier, you know? So it's, I don't know, four years ago, very quite early, mm. like, or I mean early, quite early in my e -com journey. But I'm not really like huge into manifestation. I just believe in like power of visualization. And I mean, I meditate daily 20, 20 minutes and then uh, I just visualize the future always. I'm a I spend a lot of time thinking about the future so, you know, if you, if you ask me where I see myself in five years, uh, I don't know what problem I will, I'm going to be solving, but I'm sure that it will be in, in, in AI space, 100%. Mm -hmm. And very likely, I like, I like to touch things. I like hardware, you know, I like... Uh -huh. like and I, I study right now, I told you, I'm, I'm listening to audio book about uh, Johnny Ive, the Apple designer, uh, Tony Fadel, the Wonder Design uh, app, uh, iPod. Um, you know, I'm studying Elon Musk. Uh, a lot Steve Jobs so I love I love builders and I want to build something so uh, in the five years I will have a company that will be focused that will be you know focus on uh, some sort of hardware combined with 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 AI whether it's robotics mm -hmm. you know some so that's the general direction I'm, I'm only dipping my t feet in it because I don't have only you know uh, I still have to spend a good chunk of time on on, on, uh, on the business because you know, I want to sell it to such an amount that uh, will be sufficient for me to experiment in this in, in, in AI and robotics because it will, you know, cost a lot of cash. Yeah. And I don't want to bring in uh, external outsider investors, not even an angel investors, uh, because I, I will I prefer to f around and be my own boss f for as long as I can. Uh -huh. At some point, maybe I will have to bring in some investor. But but point is, I don't know enough. To, to, to have a very clear answer with Ecom, the reason why I was able to provide such a detailed answer, such a detailed vision, is because I was already in Ecom for a while and I already you know get my, got my hands dirty, which is another thing, bro, just time. You need to commit a long period of time to a mastery of one field. I'm in Ecom for four or five years. You're in Ecom, what, what, six, seven, eight years? Bro, you just need to spend enough time in the industry and you will inevitably become, invariably become a master, you know? Hmm. And that's, that's so, and I know that I will be, a, I'm not even thinking about, you know, I want to be a billionaire anymore because that, I know that that will happen. Like that's, that's like not even a question. Mm -hmm. It's more about what impact, what, what, what do I want to build? Not even what impact, but what do I want to build? What will give me excitement? What will make me wake up in the morning? And it's so easy to get sidetracked. Even right now when I was in China, mm -hmm. I went, I'm a very rigid person. I need routine. I need routine. Like I need to wake up every day, same time. I need to be in the same, you know, I need to be in the same apartment. I need to have the same environment for a longer period of time. That's how I operate the best. Even when I was in China, it was quite difficult for me to, you know, keep up with my routine, like to run, to meditate, to have a deep work sessions for writing. We were traveling a lot from one province to another, you know, and all that. And I lost respect for myself because I, you know, I stopped mm. doing the things. And so point is, you lose it like this and it takes time to build it back. I know that I'll be back in, a, you know, back in, back on the horse, like in, a, in where I see myself being optimal. If I try hard anytime, like two, three weeks. But point being, you need to uh, be very intentional about it. Again, being very intentional. That's also uh, a, a great lesson I took from Luke Belmar in, in when I was uh -huh. in his first Capital Club uh, mastermind. You know, being intentional with everything you do. When you're being intentional, again, it's just everything organizes around you when you're intentional. Because again, having a direction is also being intentional, right? Mm -hmm. So intentionally, continue to master yourself and, 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 and kind of working on your mind and your self-control and just, then you tell yourself that you will do something and you will actually do it. You know, if you can have the biggest ideas and the biggest- Keeping your own word to yourself. Yeah. Right? That you, yeah. you promise yourself Correct. something, go to the gym and then you don't go. It's kind of like, yeah, you didn't go, but then on the back of your mind, you know that you f***ed up and you kind of like let yourself go. You, you let yourself down, right? And like, and that bugs you. And now like when approaching other things or having ambitions towards other things, you also like, ah, I don't know if I'll actually do it, right? Mm. Like, because like now you kind of like let yourself down. I think the evolution that you have done is, is a great, is a great case study, is a great example of what's possible if you put your mind to it, right? It's a, it's a case study of a personal transformation. It's a case study of a personal evolution. I hope you guys found it encouraging found it like inspirational and um um i hope you know one percent of you like that that 
will decide to you know pursue that 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 passion or whatever like you have that that you want to pursue become the best at something because at the end of the day i think well one of the things just observing you like what drives you is like you want to be the best operator we, we were talking about this like you want to be like the best operator you probably want to invest like invent even like different ways the business is run or different like products you want to you want to bring some innovation you want to bring something to the table being master of whatever field you're in like you want to commit to e-commerce you want to commit to to anything else you want to have like the best service business like just deliver to your clients the best you can um i think that's a worthwhile pursuit and that's just something that can get you excited and just you know waking up in the morning with with that passion and mm. that's life worth living yeah, man, li life is a game. Just become an MVP, you know? That's all <laughs> it is, for real. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for, for, for listening in, Mark. Thank you so much for, for making this. Um, Pleasure. And um, yeah, we'll see you in two years. Yep. Well, after, the, after the exit, we do interview. Okay. Or it will be faster. Yeah, that's 12 months, 13 months. Whenever, yeah, whenever okay, it happens. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs>